Chapter 8 Fire, Friend and Foe Early man was not aware of what fire was. However, even before discovering it, he had seen the damage caused by it through bolts of lightning and volcanic eruptions. He was afraid of fire and felt it was powerful and dangerous. Fire had confused the early men, but now we know what fire is. Fire is the result of a chemical reaction. When the oxygen is combined with carbon and hydrogen in a fuel, energy is released in the form of heat and light, which is what we call fire. There are three things required to make fire, and those are fuel, oxygen and heat. Fuel is something which is required to catch fire, like wood, coal, cooking gas, petrol etc. Then oxygen gas, which is already available in air, is required. The third requirement is heat. Fuel and oxygen cannot make fire by itself, so to burn a substance, we need to heat it. Absence of heat cannot make a fire, otherwise any newspaper or stick lying in the open would have caught fire by its own. To burn a paper or wood, we heat it before it catches fire. We do it with a lighted match. Then we wait for the fuel to reach its flash point and then it starts burning. Now what is a flash point? Flash point is the temperature at which a fuel starts burning. It is also called kindling temperature. Every fuel has its own flash point. For example, paper and wood will have different flash points. A paper catch fire sooner than wood. There is a popular saying, fire is a good servant but a bad master. It means that fire is useful only when it is under our control. When it goes out of control and tries to become a master, a lot of damage is caused. When fire is under our control, it is used for cooking food, keeping our homes warm in winters and for generating electricity. But when it goes out of control, it can burn down house and injure us too. Each year, thousands of houses and shops are damaged by fire and vast areas of forests are also destroyed by forest fires. Due to this, hundreds of people are killed or injured. Just as three things are needed to start a fire, there are three ways in which we can successfully put out a fire. In each way, one of the requirements of burning is taken away. The first way is to take away the fuel. If the fire would not have something to feed on, the burning would not take place. We can easily extinguish a fire by not adding more fuel to it. The second way of extinguishing a fire is to prevent oxygen from reaching it. A fire cannot burn without oxygen. Small fires can be put out with putting a damp blanket or a sack. Carbon dioxide is also used to extinguish the fire. The presence of carbon dioxide prevents oxygen from reaching the burning fuel and hence helps in putting out the fire. The third way of putting out a fire is to remove the heat. If we can lower the temperature and bring it below its flash point, the fuel will stop burning. For example, we blow a burning matchstick or a candle to remove the hot air around the flame so that the temperature comes below the flash point and the candle or matchstick gets extinguished. Another way of removing heat is to spray water on the fire. The water absorbs the heat from the burning fuel and lowers the temperature. The blanket of water cuts off the supply of oxygen and it extinguishes fire. Fire caused by oil and electricity cannot be put out with water. If we spray water onto an oil fire, the oil will float on the water which will not prevent it from burning but it will carry the burning oil and spread the fire more. And if we spray water on electrical fire, the person who is spraying the water will receive an electric shock, which can kill the person too. So, 
For both oil fire and electrical fire, we should use a carbon dioxide extinguisher. We humans spend millions of rupees every year just to fight fires. We even spend a lot more to find new ways of preventing fire from happening and getting out of control. During the olden times, there were no firemen. Whenever fire broke out, people would help themselves by becoming firefighters. They formed human chains and would pass buckets of water from nearest pond or well to the burning point. However, things are different now. There are special rules made just to prevent fire from happening and spreading. Firstly, there should be space between buildings to reduce the spread of fire from one building to another. Secondly, every new building, especially a public place, must ensure observance of fire prevention norms. Lastly, if there is a fire, then fire brigades, which are bands of firefighting workers with special equipments, will be there to put the fire out. The firefighters are highly trained and skilled people. They have many skills. They cut off electricity supply, knock down dangerous walls, spray water, bring fire under control and give first aid to the people who are suffering from burns or from the effect of smoke. The discovery of fire and its various uses had helped early man to cope with nature. It was indeed due to fire that we were able to adopt a settled mode of life. Fire is still worshipped in many parts of the world because people are grateful for its benefit and also scared of the damage it can cause. Fire is a friend of ours if it is used properly, but it turns into a dangerous enemy if it goes out of control. So, in this chapter, we learnt what fire really is and how it can be both dangerous and useful to us. We also learnt about the discovery of fire and who discovered it. Also, we learnt how to control fire so that it can't harm us. So now we can say that fire is our dearest friend as well as a dangerous enemy.